This video was sponsored by Skillshare. If you are looking for an online learning community with thousands of classes to level up your creativity, use the link below for a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Keep watching for my bullet journal setup and some Skillshare classes that I have been loving lately. Hey everyone, it's Erica and welcome back to the studio. Today I am going to set up my May bullet journal monthly log and a few weekly spreads as well. The layout is very similar to all of my previous bullet journal spreads, which is a very basic monthly to-do list and a calendar of highlights. The look and feel of the theme for May is very earthy, botanical, lots of green and tan. I'm also very excited to use some handmade paper for the first time ever. This was sent over to me from Bitter Melon Bindery. It has dried leaves in it. I also have other papers with dried flowers. And since it's the first time I'm using handmade paper to collage, I almost felt a little bit nervous to tear into it. It's so precious. I can't wait to use all of these other papers for other artworks, and I definitely am going to try and make it last as long as possible. I really love how the collages turned out this month. I thought that while I do my collaging thing, I would talk a little bit about how I've been using my bullet journal lately. I always thought that my bullet journal would be a pretty accurate reflection of how I'm spending my days, but recently I've realized that the better things are going, the less I use my bullet journal. I have been settling down into some really comfortable routines where I know exactly what to do to keep things running smoothly. It's like second nature now. And so because of that, I don't really write anything down in my bullet journal unless it's unique to that day. My bullet journal feels a lot emptier now because my physical to-do list is now more of a mental to-do list. It feels really good to know exactly what to do in the morning, in the evening, and it's not quite living on autopilot, but it's almost like it's instinctual. I guess that means the bullet journal is doing its job as a tool to help me find the habits and the sustainable loops that best serve me each day. I'm definitely a creature of habit, and I'm a little bit obsessed with finding new ways to improve the structure that I set up in my life. I think my tendency for structure and routine has a lot to do with how little control I had in my childhood. I'm also susceptible to spiraling into negative thoughts and having a solid routine acts like an anchor and keeps me grounded. Even if I'm not feeling my best mentally, I still know what the next step is to get through the day. At the same time, I've learned not to rely too heavily on structure and routine as a boon for my mental health. If something doesn't go to plan, I know that it's important for me to remain flexible. I know that having a routine and doing the same thing over and over again might sound boring to some people, but to me, it feels a lot like peace and I never really feel bored ever. Within my routines, there is room for variation and spontaneity. There's always something to do, always something new to learn. Speaking of learning new things, I have been using Skillshare to learn new drawing and painting techniques, video editing, and even how to build healthy habits and get rid of ones that don't serve me anymore. Here are some classes that I've enjoyed on these topics. The first class is Draw Your Life, Introduction to Illustrated Journaling, taught by Mimi Chow, and it has inspired me to incorporate more drawing into future journaling videos. Then there's advanced video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro taught by Jordi. After several years of making videos for YouTube, I think it's about time for me to graduate from a basic knowledge of editing. 
And this class was a really fun way to learn more advanced things like keyframes and multi-camera editing and lots of things that I'm still kind of processing right now. I've also learned a lot from Easy Productivity, Tips for Artists, taught by Brooke Glazer, which is an essential class if you're a work-from-home creator who struggles with procrastination like I do. I love that Skillshare is ad-free so that you can learn without any interruptions, and it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium memberships so that you can explore your creativity. Learning new things is something that I always want to incorporate into my routine, some way, somehow, no matter how busy I get. It's so fulfilling and it's something to look forward to. I've had to eliminate certain habits to make room for all of these other things that I actually want to do because there's only so much time in a day. I've managed to stop endlessly scrolling on social media. I'm posting a little less frequently now to my Instagram stories, and I'm just not using Instagram as much as I used to. I noticed that I was spending an excessive amount of time on it, I'm like a little embarrassed to say that it was like four or five hours a day when I checked my screen time. And while Instagram is really fun and is also a great way to connect with my audience there, it also prevented me from getting actual work done. I would post a story, but then I would get sucked into 15 minutes of scrolling and all of that adds up to hours and hours spent on the app. Instagram is designed to keep you hooked on the app where every time you open it and you get a comment or interaction, it rewards you with a little dopamine hit. So I decided to make Instagram a little bit harder to get to and limit my time on the app. I buried the app way deep in a folder so that it's harder to get to on my phone. I closed my DMs and I redirected people to email instead. I've also deleted TikTok entirely because even though I don't have a huge TikTok following and I don't really post any TikToks, I get a little bit obsessed with these funny 30 second videos. They add up as well. Even if it's only 30 seconds or a minute, it all adds up to hours and hours. So instead of watching 30 TikToks, I will take a Skillshare class or catch up with my favorite artist vlogs on YouTube while I sketch or journal. So I guess a lot of my habit engineering has been replacing certain habits with other ones. There are some areas in my schedule that could definitely use some improvement. For example, I really want to incorporate a decent workout routine somewhere. I always tell myself that I need to make self-care more of a priority but I'm really happy with the other things that I've got going on, my routines with my family, taking care of my son, the dogs, working on my creativity, learning new skills, and my work in general is going really well. I will be working on my own self-care and physical health soon, but so far, so good. I feel like I've gone on long enough about habits and routines, and now we're almost at the end of the video. If you're here, you've probably shared some of these sentiments. As bullet journalers, as planner lovers, we are a community that loves organizing our lives. So I'd love to know what some of your routines are. How are your days structured? Is there an ideal way that you would like to spend your days? Or is there something you'd like to tweak? 
After all, in the words of Annie Dillard, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. And with that, I wish you happy journaling, happy art making, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.